told her not to bring the dog into bed with you. <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> you can't say that. No. Rock a pie, Matt Sims in his motorhome. That's enough. Today, That's enough. we on the podcast, the Motorhome Up podcast, we are looking at how to get a good sleep in your motorhome. Yes. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Matt Sims. He's the expert. This is the Motorhome Matt podcast. Now, let's get straight in with the news. The February show. What is Ooh. the news? It's the Caravan Camping and Motorhome Show. It's back 21st to 26th of Feb at the NEC in Birmingham. And we're there. Yes, we'll be there. Uh, we've got our own little stand, so make sure you do come and say hello. We'll be there with the team. Lots of interviews again, talking to lots of interesting, exciting people. Lots of new innovations coming next year, which are interesting to see. So, yeah, make sure if you want to get your tickets, you can do so. ccmshow.co.uk thatleisureshop.com and they of course uh, also sponsor the podcast um, you've got 10 pounds off at the moment haven't you we have used the code motorhome mat one word at the checkout and get 10 pounds off when you spend just 100 so keith your 100 quid could cost you just 90 that's a fantastic idea matt so the main part of the podcast today we're talking about how to get a good sleep in your motorhome really matt. important indeed yeah. really key this is what's your top tips on sleeping well, the number one, I would say level up. So get some levelling ramps. <laughs> Guess what? We've got them in the shop. But they are, they are really? crucial. Yeah. <laughs> and they're probably on sale as well. <laughs> it's like, like carpets are, please. <laughs> but level up. So what do I mean by that? So get level. So use a spirit level, sell them as well. Or you just use a phone with the spirit level app. Or a gin and tonic. Perfect way of levelling up. Just put it on the table, make sure the water's level. That's how they built the pyramids, you know. Is it? Yeah, that's how they level the pyramids, with gin and tonics. <laughs> it is, it's true. Hendrix. Yeah, the, the, what they did is they've discovered they built long troughs and just put water in them, and that's how they levelled the land of to, course. to build the pyramids. I didn't know that. Because water finds its own level. It does. Mm. Well, there you are. So a glass of it on your table... Keep an eye. Absolutely. Get level, so drink you, it. When you hop into bed to get a good sleep, you don't really want to be going one way or the other, up or down or nope. side to side. Get that motor home or caravan level. Get it level. So use the ramps to do so, uh, and it will mean that your sinks and shower empty properly as well. I've got a list here of your top tips. Yeah. Earplugs. Earplugs? Yeah. I've, I've heard you snore. <laughs> <laughs> Earplugs can be a really useful little addition if you are with someone who snores that can be a godsend but also on a campsite you can get some random noises you could be on a farmyard it could be a cockerel sleeping next door that's going to get up before you <laughs> what are you laughing at random noises <laughs> there could be random there noises could be. you could be near the toilet blocks as well <laughs> oh, you, you don't want to be there feeling flushed well you, 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 could, you could be so if you're near the loo, someone else might get up in the middle of the night and go to the loo, and then all you hear is them crashing around in the toilet block. <laughs> the flush. So earplugs important. Okay. They are important. Yeah, yeah. blackout blinds as oh, well. Oh, they're in, if you've got kids, blackout blinds are a godsend. They're fantastic yeah. because especially small children, they, their circadian rhythm means that they get up when the sun comes up and they go to sleep when the sun goes down. So, you know, in summertime when you're out in your motor home or caravan, the blackout yep. blind is fantastic. And if you don't want to be well, Kid them into night time. Yeah. Just check them before you go away because they can tear really easy. They're made of paper and they can get little holes in. Those holes can be really annoying. Uh, so make sure your blackout blinds are working and in order. And as I say, don't don't park near the toilet block. I mean, just you know, don't go there. It's if you end up parked next to it, then make sure you've got your earplugs. Um, think about your bed layout as well. So if you're choosing a motorhome, if you choose a transverse double rear bed. That means one of you is going to be climbing over the other to get out if you need a wee in the night. Or you've woken up and just want to get up. So I remember one of the early motorhomes we had was an over cab bed. And I was always last to bed. And I climbed the ladder. You know, and there's 16 stone of me going up the ladder. The whole van's rocking around. Woke everyone up. And then I'm first up as well. And I'm getting up and getting down the ladder. Again, wake everyone up really early. So, you know, no, no good. So if you're choosing a motorhome and you want a good night's sleep, it's, that's really important to you. Those kind of considerations are important. So what should you be looking for then? Uh, if you're sleeping with someone else and you are going to be getting up in the night, then I'd look at an island bed where you can get out either side of it or single beds. Uh, they're not very romantic, um, although some of them are quite wide. <laughs> uh, but it means you're going to get a better night's sleep if you're not if you are getting up in the night. Yeah, it comes with age, doesn't it? Let's be honest. How many times are you up in the night? Never, funnily really? enough. Really, really, yeah, really, yeah, really. 
How much wine do you drink before you go to bed? I don't hardly drink any wine at all. Yeah. But middle-aged men, prostate problems, it gets bigger. <laughs> what, the problem or the prostate? <laughs> the prostate. Yeah, it does, it's uh, true. It does. I'm getting up in the middle of the night. Are you? Yeah, oh, yeah. every night almost, about one o'clock. Yeah, well, that's quite normal for a middle-aged man. You are middle-aged, don't you? I'm, I'm middle-aged. It just has a hard life. Yeah, it wasn't that long a paper <laughs> rain. I am yeah, old. No, it's quite normal, you know. If you're getting up three or four times in the night, go and see your doctor because you could have something called BPH, which is benign prostatic hydroplasia, which is a natural condition, which means your prostate enlarges and presses on your bladder. But it's not prostate cancer. Don't panic. And most men have oh. BPH. Really? Yeah. What prostate gets bigger as you get older. What can you do about it? And then give you some tablets. Um, uh, you can change your diet. I'm not a doctor. Don't ask me. Okay. Mm. Okay. Dr. Keith. All right. Good knowledge, Keith. Thank you. We're a medical podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and temperature. Yeah. Because that it makes a big difference. Most of us sleep in cooler bedrooms. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you go to bed and the, uh, uh, the central heating is on and, and the radiator's hot. You always turn it down. We, we, we seem to like having a cooler room and then getting warm under the duvet, don't we? Yeah, it's true. I always, though, I wake up and the duvet's kicked off. And it's actually, I wake up and then I'm aware of how cold it is. Mm. You know, I, I can't sleep when it's hot. So being cool in the motome is really important. Uh, and equally, trying to get to sleep in the cold is horrible, isn't it? You just want to get warm. So, you know, depending on when you're away, keep in mind the temperature. If you're away in 30 degrees, then, you know, consider an air conditioning unit or an air cooler unit. Keep the blinds closed in the summer when it gets really hot and keep that space cold or cool as you can. And then equally in the winter, you know, keep it warm. Uh, make sure you've got the heating on before you go to bed. If you're out for the evening, remember to leave the heating on when you go, when when you come back to the van, it will be toasty warm. Uh, and, you know, consider an extra blanket if that's what you need. Uh, yeah. I mean, the thing is, it is, is autumn and, and, and early spring, isn't it? Where you think you're, you're going out and it's, it's really not going to be that cold and, and you get surprised by it. And actually you spend the night, you know, not sleeping or, or falling asleep and then waking up cold. And it's horrible. It ruins the following day, doesn't it? I mean, it knock you out for a few days not getting a good night's sleep. Yeah. And talking about awful. that, the bedding, what sort of bedding should you be looking at? Yeah, I mean, we take the bedding from home. Um, you know, we have a double bedded motorhome and it's, you know, it's lovely. It's cosy. It's familiar. That sounds daft, but, you know, it feels like your own bed. Um, I've always said I sleep better in the motorhome than I do at home and it's true I do I don't think that's necessarily about the bed or the bedding I think that's actually about being outdoors and you know connecting with nature and you know getting all that fresh air and I think it just makes you sleep better it's something about it Camping and Caravaning Club of course did their enjoyment report didn't they which unpacked that and proves the science of happy campers uh, it's definitely true definitely makes you happier and sleeps better sleep better and you've been talking to some of our friends at Duvalet, haven't I you? I have, yeah. They are specialists in motorhome and caravan bedding. And I caught up with Elizabeth from Duvalet back at the NEC show uh, and uh, had a really great conversation with her about Duvalet and its history and the products they make. Hi, Elizabeth. How Hi. Hi, Matt. I'm very good, thank you. Nice to see you. Now, Elizabeth has the perfect job. She makes bed covers or mattresses. I make mattresses and mattress toppers and unique sleeping bags. So you get to lie down all day? No, I don't. Unfortunately, <laughs> just at the end of the day, I might. You might see me. My can we up, after this? Can we have a lie maybe. down? Maybe. <laughs> it's been a long day. It has been a long day. Now, tell us a little bit about Duvalet. So it's you and Alan started it. When was that? So we founded the company in 2003. Um, we had an innovative idea that we patented, and we now sell the products globally. That's incredible. And now that the kids are in the business as well. Yeah, two of the children with three sons, two of our sons are working in the business. One is commercial director and the other is the financial director. Um, and yeah, that's it's really mostly it's good. Mostly, mostly <laughs> I call them kids, good. they're not kids no, anymore. No, they're not the mature men, but, uh, you know, mostly it's good and I'm still the mum. So, um, yeah, I can imagine the dynamic. Yeah, those early morning coffee meetings. Mm, yeah, interesting. Yeah. But so tell us what Duvalet does. So Duvalet helps people sleep on the move. So where we will improve any sleeping environment, whether it be a caravan, a motorhome, a tent, a boat, we can make people sleep anywhere. And that's really important because a lot of our customers 
uh, you know, they're coming up to retirement, they're buying the vehicles of the dreams, but they still need to sleep. And you, historically, caravans and motorhomes, you'll sleep on the seats. They are not beds. We can transform any area, any seat, into a luxurious sleeping area. But not only that, we make sure that we do it so the products are easy to use. When we designed the products, we tried and tested every product uh, with three children. So we needed something that was quick. So all our products, they roll out, you sleep on them and sleep well, roll away and store away. So they're easy to use. We are out to make people's life easier, not harder. Now I can speak from first-hand experience. Our first motorhome was a rear lounge motorhome our first coach built motorhome and it was nothing more than a, a really uncomfortable bed with no storage yeah, well. and a duvet saved the day because it was just like sleeping on the Pyrenees yeah, you know, all exactly, those shapely yeah, cushions yeah, well it gets rid of all the lumps and bumps yeah and it's also your bedding and it's just nice it feels like your bed away from home I mean I've, I've used all the products we had a touring van and I used to sit in bed on the morning with my cup of tea and my duvet and it was actually more comfortable than my bed at home now you don't just make mattress or mattresses that are cut to shape so you know you, you do make them to fit any size and shape bed yeah, don't we, you we do so we'll do products that you sleep on the seats that transform those but we also do mattress toppers for poor quality mattresses in vans that have got fixed beds and we also do the full mattresses a wide range we do um we have a um, an exclusive agreement with Swift we make them a very lightweight mattress which is a memory fiber it's a fiber mattress so it's very um recyclable and it's also very comfortable but it's light so this mattress you can get under the bed a lot easier and it opens up that storage under the bed yeah. and it's easier to get your bed in on so we do a wide range of products but that one is particularly for for design for the swift group so you make them for island beds french yeah. beds and you have a varying uh, width of, uh, of single bed mattress as well don't you yes we do any ca uh, yeah any sort of width we do and we have a vast library of sizes so all the customer needs to do is email us make an inquiry or place an order say what van model they've got what year and then our sales team will email them a drawing we've got 99 percent of the drawings they confirm it's all right and we make it that's amazing easy easy that's what we want we want to make people's lives easier rather than harder the whole process of buying is easy and then when they get it they absolutely love it i mean if you stand here at this stand above five minutes somebody will come and tell you how good our products i just stand back you know i think well you start you know and they're saying they are the change though the, it opens up the le it opens up leisure vehicles for people who would not normally be able to use them because they may be in a wheelchair they maybe have a really bad back and they can't sleep in those products and it in enables them to and it can be life-changing for some people yeah and tell us about the duvalet sleeping bag What's, how does that work the duvalet sleeping bag is one cover with two pockets in the bottom pocket you have a foam you get a choice of thickness qualities of foam and in the top you have a duvet again a choice of duvets winter summer it, you roll it out it's you're not zipped in like a traditional sleeping bag you can kick your legs out everybody hates being zipped in mm. it's a lovely poly cotton sheeting so it feels like your bed at home i will say in the use that, that people are using them they'll probably last them forever they may need another cover in a few years and you have one for single and you put two together for a double they're reversible they're easy to wash there is no drawbacks with duvets everybody loves them and they roll up into a really simple bag yeah they roll up into a small roll and then they go in a storage bag and go away 40 degree machine wash yes i sound like an expert <laughs> have you actually slept on one i have they're amazing oh well i'm going to sleep on one again uh. in a minute so tell me about dragon's den so we were approached at an exhibition like this in 2003 um, to go on Dragon's Den. We would have never applied, but we were approached to go on by the team and um, we applied. We went for um, what do you call, an audition and we passed the audition. What was that like? Quite scary, <laughs> but not half as scary as going on. I think what they have to see is that if, I think they have to, they have to know that if they if they get you onto the programme that you are going to be able to perform on there you know and so they really it's a very high pressured um, environment with just the audition at the end they throw some questions at you that really take you off guard we passed that and then we were negotiating with the I mean they knew everything about our business the Dragons didn't the BBC did and then we went on um, we were locked in a room for 12 hours we got on at half past seven at night um, 
so by that time I was pretty exhausted we walked up the stairs and it was like walking into your television you know they were all sat there <laughs> So we went, We got out with the pitch. We thought we knew everything that we needed to know. But of course, Deborah Meaden found something that we didn't know. Of course she did. The cameras came down and she started to really tear into me, if I'm honest. So we had a little bit of her, which we didn't see much on the telly. And, uh, <clears throat> and then we got an investment from Hilary DeVay, who was lovely. And she threw her whole team at Duvalet and it changed the whole world of Duvalet. We were even called something different uh, wow. before that but we, we, we renamed the company Duvalet and we became great friends with, with Hillary and sadly she did die she not, did. not recently. Yeah. Great friends with Hillary. She was a super clever, bright, sassy woman who I was very fond of. Yeah and it's now a global business isn't it's it? It's a global business. We sell our products across different markets. We sell them in Korea, China, Australia, New Zealand, um, yeah, France, Holland. Incredible. Yeah. Brilliant. And where can people find you online? Uh, Duvalet.co.uk. Brilliant. Thanks ever so much. Thank you. Have a great week. Thank you. That was Elizabeth from Duvalet. How important are specialist companies when it comes to motorhoming and caravanning and camping? Well, we found this great company. They came to speak to us uh, in Birmingham at the show. They're called Straight to Sleep, and they have an ingenious little product. Uh, it, it, there's a, a type of bed in a motorhome. I refer to an island bed, and often the bottom corners are curved or cut off, or a French bed where one corner is cut off, which is usually to give you an access route to the bathroom. It's about the layout of the motorhome. It's called a French bed because it was a bed design that was popular in the French market. That's the reason. No more, no more complicated than that. But it means that sometimes your feet hang out the end of the bed. And of course, you know, your foot dropping to the floor when you're asleep is going to wake you up. And these guys at Straight to Sleep, clues in the name, made a little device that slides under the mattress that makes it a straight edge and squares it off. And I spoke to them about this ingenious product. It's brand new to the market. And uh, this is the conversation I have with them. Motorhome layout is a, is a popular topic of conversation here on the podcast. And we often get asked, what is a French bed? Well, a French bed is a double bed at the rear corner of a motorhome where its corner is cut off. And it's called a French bed because it was launched into the French motorhome market a couple of decades ago and was nicknamed that when it came here to the UK and was very popular for some time. It's kind of made a bit of a renaissance, but there's one big issue with a French bed, which Linda at Straight to Sleep had experience of, and frankly, me too. And that's where your feet fall out when you're asleep. And it wakes you up, doesn't it, Linda? It certainly does. It certainly does. Now, you have come up with an innovative, brilliant product called Straight to Sleep. Tell us a little bit more about what it is and how it fixes the challenge of the French bed. Hi, everyone. Well, the, the French bed, yes, was an issue for me um, and for everybody that, that I know of. Um, I'm only five foot two, but I still felt my legs dangling over the side. You're in a four foot bed, so obviously the sharing of the space is, is important. And so whether you turn over each way, your feet are a problem. So during lockdown, I came up with an idea um, to solve it um, and got it patented, got it trademarked. And it works absolutely fantastic. And I get a decent night's sleep. It's easy to use and yeah, problem solved. I'm quite excited about it. So this is basic. I mean, it's, the best products are the simplest ones, aren't they? And this is definitely one of those. Absolutely. It's simply like a lever, like a shelf you pull out the bottom of the bed. Is that right? It is. It's um, an independent item. Um, it literally, it takes seconds to use. You slide it within under the mattress on top of the bed frame. It's the same colour as the bed frame. It's got a lip on it. So you put your fingers, just slide it out, put your infill, foam infill, a shape desired to take that space and pull your fitted sheet over, which fits perfectly as a standard four foot fitted sheet. Um, when you want to stow it away, you lift out the foam insert and you just push it and slide it straight underneath. And you can do that with your two little fingers. It's that easy. It's dead simple to use. Simple and it, it's universal, isn't it? It's left or right. It doesn't it matter. It is universal, we yes. We've uniquely done it design-wise so that if you've got your left-hand bed or your right-hand bed, it is universal with the lip on that front edge that you can take it wherever you want to go. So if you sell a motorhome, you can take it with you. 
um, or you might want to sell it with your motorhome as a, a nice sort of attribute to a selling point of view for the French bed. So is the is the foam infill custom made? Because obviously French beds have different dimensions, don't they? It is, yes. Um, if you've got certain models, obviously we know the sizes for those certain models. So we have um, a form template within the extender and you would then fit your extender, give us those dimensions and we get that sent direct to you with the shape that's needed. Brilliant. And how much does it cost, Linda? Um, the, it's, it's coming in at um, £450, including VAT. Um, that is for the uh, aluminium bed extender and the infill as well. Um, and that's including VAT. Um, and then we get the infill sent direct to you. And we can either directly send the, um, the extender to you, or if it's in outlets, um, you can go and get it. It's online on my website, so it can be purchased um, in that way. And tell us where people can have a look at it, buy one and find out more. At the moment, because it's early stages, um, we do have it exhibited um, in the showroom at MG Caravans in Royston. They did exhibit it for us at the NEC show um, in October and it was in the 510 caravan. And obviously we made a couple of sales from people seeing it. I think it needs to be seen, which the video is on our website so you can see it in action um and yeah that's that's the way it is at the moment so we are going to get it as in many outlets as we can um so it's bear with us at the moment um but if you want to go on the website and have a look and purchase it you can do well th this worth saying this is a brand new product isn't it launched it is in october it's hot 22 I mean, <laughs> it's literally you're weeks into this so yeah it's brand new uh, and so there's a lot more to come. And this works on an island bed as well. So like a peninsula bed. Which, you know, it's, it's it's on the I mean, island beds again, apparently I'm hearing reviews come back to, from from friends and, and family that have got them. The island beds are OK. But again, if you're two tall people and you've got the rounded edges, there's no reason why you couldn't have two in those beds and you just have your left hand and your right hand to pull out to square off the bed. Um, I think my issues are with the French bed and, and again from what homework I've done, you they tend to be more into a bedroom which actually cuts off your whole area of living. So you're cocooned into a box at the, at the early stages if you go in the door and, and then you've got a bedroom. Well, the only time you need your bedroom is when you go to sleep. And so the mm. island bed, I feel, is wasting that glorious space with all the windows around your motorhome or caravan to be able to see out. Um, so with the French bed, you've got all that lovely air space, which is huge. Um, and you only pull out your extender when you go to sleep. So you've still got the full range of the space and everything about it. But if someone's got an island bed where there are big corners cut off, so one of the new roller team models uh, does the, the corners are really aggressively cut Absolutely. to enable you to get around it. You could potentially buy two of these and ha and make a, a square bed or rectangular bed. Yes, they would work exactly the, the same way. They would stow away either side because the way the bed width is and the way the extenders are, um, you could fit two, you know, one either side and it still would then not butt to the middle under the mattress and then you would then slide out to create that square bed. So again, your standard fitted sheets would fit. Yes, you yeah. can buy the unique sheets um, to fit the shape beds, but I understand they're not, um, you know, they're not cheap. Um, but, you know, if you've got standard sheets and, and you've got your bed extenders, then happy to go. So, Linda, just tell us the website where people can find out more and place an order if they want to order from you direct. If you go on to um, the Straight to Sleep website um, and literally go on onto that um, one, there's a film on there to show you how to um, to use it. Um, but, yeah, it's just straight to sleep. Dot, dot and it's straight number two sleep it, it is very important the number two because we felt what with the design of the straight to sleep logo the two and the shape of it symbols the person sort of crawled up with their knees on under their neck oh, to yeah. go to sleep <laughs> um ah. so that that's how we came up with that idea that that's quite unique to the straight to sleep 
And I can see that now in your branding. Modern. Very clever. Yeah, absolutely. So um, very carefully thought of. Um, and yeah, so, um, but yeah, the straight to sleep.co.uk is uh, obviously the website. Um, and yeah, it can be purchased from there. Fantastic. Well, Linda, thanks ever so much for coming on the podcast. Okay. We love innovation. We love simple products that fix often a simple problem. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a great solution to a big objection I've heard many times to the French bed and certain shaped island beds. So well done you. Thank um, you. Congratulations on getting it patented as well. That's a real achievement. Well, I'm hoping um, to, I, sorry, I'm hoping to get it on the market to bring back the French beds if they are going to be phased out. Also the conversions of um, new build motorhomes, if you're going to do self-build, it puts that on the market for floor space as well. So yeah. I'm quite excited to be able to have solved that problem. And yeah, happy days for those that have already got their motorhomes and caravans. It's not the end of the road. You can have a good night's sleep. Yeah, well, I wish you every success with it. We will Thank definitely you. follow you with great interest. And uh, let's catch up in a year and see how you're doing. Thank you very much, Matt. I've really enjoyed Thanks, it. Thanks, Linda. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Try before you buy. What well, is that all about then? Well, Matt? I think it's a great idea. I always say this to people looking to buy a motorhome or change from one particular layout of motorhome to another is go and try one before you buy one. Um, it's so important because, yeah, we've talked about different bed designs, French bed, island bed, single bed, overcab bed. There are so many. And people say to me, well, what? What should I consider when I'm choosing a motorhome? And one of the first questions I say is, how do you want to sleep? And it's the last thing people think about because they think about the adventures and the journeys they're going to go on and the places they're going to visit. You think, well, wh why are you asking me how I'm going to sleep? You know, that, does that matter? It's really important. It's the one time you spend eight hours in one place. The rest of the day, you're going to be up and about and out and about, you know, doing various things. Sleeping is so important and it's going to be the thing. If you compromise it, it's going to spoil the entire experience. So, Think about how do you want to sleep? Do you want to share a double bed? Do you want single beds? Do you want to be climbing over each other? The shape of the bed is important. Go and if you're not sure, go and try one. Go and hire those layouts. You, you know, motomeholidaycompany.com. I'll give a plug for our own team. We've got a range of different layouts. We're based in the Southwest, and you are very welcome, of course, to come and try lots of different layouts. Just go for a weekend, try a French bed, try an island bed, try a rear lounge that makes into a bed. You know, is it a case that you've got this really lovely living area, or have you just got a really uncomfortable bed and no storage? You know, what's going to work best for you? So go and try lots of layouts before, or the layouts you're considering of buying before you invest your money. So you don't have to go to the dealer in your pyjamas and say, we want to spend the night. <laughs> don't set the alarm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I'll be here a while. <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much for that, Matt. So that's how to get a good sleep in your motorhome. Let's dive into our audience Q&A, the questions and the answers from the people like you who watch and listen to the podcast. Bob has been in touch. He says, Auto Trail Chieftain has only two belted seats. Alco, the chassis manufacturer, says their chassis, take a belted seat for the Arapaho, needs a supplier in a two-belt seat. So thanks for your question, Bob. So you, you need a supplier of the seat belts. So you are quite right. You can fit extra seat belts to an Alco chassis. Really important that the layout you're choosing, though, has forward or rear-facing seats. Those are the types of seats that you can fit a belt to. If you're looking for a supplier of a seatbelt, you can Google it. There are a number of places online that will supply a seatbelt. I have used and can recommend Total. Uh, they are in Stoke-on-Trent and they will fit seatbelts to you and advise on how it can be done. Really important that the seatbelts are fitted to the chassis, directly to the chassis. Now that may mean drilling through the furniture, drilling through the wooden carcass. Uh, it might mean breaking into a gas cupboard, which then needs resealing. But however you do it, it must be fitted directly to the chassis. There's probably going to be some sort of metalwork and welding that's going to be needed. Um, the other thing to check, of course, is uh, you need to tell the DVLA you've added extra seats and you need to check your payload. But we're not going to unpack that one today. <laughs> but check that you can have those extra seats in the motorhome, that it can take the weight of extra people. 
if you want to know more about payloads, we did do a podcast specifically on that subject a little while ago. So look it up uh, wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. Ian says, my wife and I are thinking of buying a four birth motorhome. What do you think of the top five things? Not one, not two, not three, not four, <laughs> five things. O- only five. <laughs> we should be thinking about. That's easy. So uh, congratulations and welcome to the clan. Uh, I would say number one, as I've already said, is sleeping. How do you want to sleep? Layout is so important. It's going to be the thing that spoils it for you if you get it wrong. So number one, layout and how do I want to sleep? Number two, I'd ask you then, when are you going to use it? Are you going to use it all year or are you just going to use it in the summer? If you're going to use it in the winter, it needs to be a, a properly insulated motorhome. It needs to be one that's winterized. So perhaps you want to consider one with fresh water tank that's inside the motorhome rather than underslung. Worth noting that many uh, British manufacturers put the fresh water tank underneath the van, which means it will freeze, which means you lose all your water. Whereas a lot of European manufacturers and some UK manufacturers, is worth saying as well, will put the fresh water tank inside. Uh, some put the wastewater tank inside a floor as well. So it's sort of inside the motorhome, stops that freezing. There are heaters that can heat up your wastewater tank as well. So you keep your wastewater warm if it's outside and stop it freezing. So these things are important as to you know when are you using it? If you're going to use it all year round, those are things to think about. Where are you planning to use it? Are you going to use it in the UK? And if the answer is yes, and you're going to use it all year round, you need lots of seating area because it's going to rain. I'm afraid that's true of Britain, isn't it? So you might want to consider a rear lounge layout if that lends itself to number one, how you want to sleep. Uh, And that's going to give you somewhere to sit. If you're going to be using it in the summer and you're going to be using it on the continent, then you're going to spend most of the days outside. You're not going to be spending much time in it at all. Number four, how long are you using it for? Are you planning a weekend trip, the odd week, or are you going on a nine-month adventure? If it's a longer trip, then you need to consider storage. So I would consider, for a long trip, a big garage space. You're going to value that storage space. Choosing a rear lounge layout with minimal storage, I think, is going to compromise your trip because you're not going to have anywhere to put your stuff. If you're going for a weekend and you're into kiting or boating and you take a lot of stuff with you, you're going to need storage then. So you know, how long are you using it for and what you're going to do when you're away is really important. And then I'd consider budget. So are you going to be looking at new or used? Most people, you know, they think, oh, how much have we got to spend? That's the number one factor. I'd say at the point of deciding is the least important. There you go, Ian. You got your money's worth there with five points answered. Nikki's in Dudley. We're thinking of going to Spain with our caravan and don't know where to start. I recommend outside your front door. Boom, boom. Uh, what would you recommend or how do you go about organising a trip? That's a great question. So... Yeah, if you've never done it before, it can be quite daunting, can't it? I would say start at home with YouTube. There's loads of advice on on YouTube. Andrew Ditton's channel is really useful. Uh, He has been touring around all over the place in a caravan and a motorhome. Lee Davey has also done some big epic trips with a caravan in partnership with Bailey. So I'd start with those guys and look at their YouTube channels. There's so much more content out there. Wandering Bird as well. Kat's got loads of advice for travelling to Europe. And there's lots and lots to download from her website as well. Lots of useful trips. And then you can, of course approach one of the the trip planning companies, uh, M&A uh, are one of them, uh, and they will organise a trip. So if you're going uh, with a motorhome particularly, then they will organise a trip. But I notice that Nikki is looking at buying a caravan. So you, know, you, could, you could then nonetheless buy a trip uh, and you know, help that would help you work out where the campsites are and there are people that would do that for you. So Google is your friend, I'd say. That's the best place to start. Fantastic. And remember, Spain is a hot country. And so you have to obviously plan for that as well, because you're going to be in the metal box uh, for a lot of the time. So uh, make sure you're well prepared. Indeed. Yeah. Take a take an air cooler unit. Is it Atherston or Atherstone? I ask because Craig is there. He's asked this question. Hi, are there any all electric motorhomes now available? Ring the bell. Ding, ding. There it is. (laughs) As there is plenty of room for battery packs, etc. Well, he says there's plenty of room for battery packs. This comes up time and time again. Electric motorhomes. Constantly. It's just 
It said bullet. We want to dodge, isn't it? It's such a massive topic. I've said before, I've got so many questions about this. We will definitely be covering this in 2023 and beyond. And it's a topic that we will be watching very, very closely. I, I just can't get any answers to this. I mean, there are... There is an all-electric camper van, uh, a small motor made by a Dutch company called Tonka, uh, and it's €140,000 or something. It's not cheap. Um, there are some innovations around electric camper vans. Um, there are a few of them about, uh, but they're very, very f- small in number. Bursner have just developed an electric motor home uh, and as a prototype, and to make it, they took the batteries out. You know, I mean, that's a big job. Uh, and to keep you know, their team safe while they were assembling it, the batteries were removed and then put back in. So by an all-electric motor, I assume that Craig means electric hob, no gas. So it's it has electric hob, electric oven, electric heating. Everything is running off the battery. Uh, and there's no need to, to hook up separately. You just plug in your big recharge plug and it does everything. Um, I... Pff, then you're into the questions of infrastructure. You know, you're down in a remote part of Scotland. Can you get electric to recharge your the the engine batteries and run the camper van? Because if you're just plugging it into somebody's main in the in the farmhouse or the clubhouse, you know, you could be sitting there for 24 hours if you're running everything off the electricity. Probably longer. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and if you know if there's 20 people in a field all wanting to do that, something's going to trip out, isn't it? Mm. It's not going to last. So yeah. Lots and lots of questions. We will definitely be having a few guest appearances on the podcast next year. Um, some fairly big names and people with a really deep insight into this. And you uh, you have got together with one of your friends and you are going to be making from the ground up an electric van, aren't you? We are. It's already happening. Yeah, you leaked that one recently. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not making electric. We're making an electric camper van. So we've bought an electric van and we're converting it to a camper van. But to be, it will probably have a gas hob. It's not going to be all electric. I mean, converting electricity into heat energy is one surefire way of draining any battery of really, really quickly. Yeah. So doesn't it make sense with an electric motorhome, considering that you, you, you want range out of the thing, not to expend power where you have an alternative? And a hob is the obvious thing, isn't it? Gas hob, yeah, mm. I think so. Yeah, and that's what we're going with. I mean, I think the challenge is big enough to recharge it you know, when you're on holiday somewhere. Um, and, you know, might, we're, we're exploring the possibility of solar on the roof to recharge the engine battery. Now, that's proving to be a bit tricky, but it's thought that a, a long, sunny day could give us about 8 to 10 miles. And uh, that could mean we can get to a charger point. So the, the things which come up all the time with electric uh, camper vans and the idea of the range, we've talked about that, how far you can travel on a charge, yeah. weight, the cost, and as you say, charging. Those are the yeah. things, those are the perennials, aren't they? Yeah, but I have a concern about this. We're, you know, we're, we're suffering massive supply chain issues at the moment, and we know that the manufacturers of the chassis are very focused on electrification, and they're less focused on combustion build. So, you know, there are big issues of supply of, of motorhomes that are diesel engine. What's going to happen in the future? So in 2030, all new vehicles have to be hybrid, and then in 2035, they have to be 20, they have to be pure electric yeah so hybrid is an, it's got an electric element to it it's charged yeah. from the engine you've got an a, engine and you've got batteries a combustible engine could yeah. be petrol or diesel yeah. so what happens is you, when you drive on the motorway you mainly use the engine and that also at the same time charges the battery Correct. when you're doing lower speeds um, then the battery kicks in and so you save uh, on on yeah, diesel, and, they, and they don't need to be recharged. The battery can be flat when you get to it yeah. in the morning and it would just run on the engine. Yeah, you just run it on the engine. We have a hybrid car and yeah. it's lovely. We love it. It's yeah. great. So it's quick. So you say from is it 2030, it's mm-hmm. got to be hybrid. So UK government have introduced this rule uh, that all vehicles must be hybrid by 2030. Now, what's that going to do to motorhomes? I haven't seen a hybrid powered chassis that a motorhome manufacturer has built on yet. And I'm not aware that there's one imminently in the pipeline. Now, if you bear in mind that motorhomes are planned several years in advance, so as we record this, it's basically seven years away. So in the next few years, we need to see a very viable 
Fiat, Peugeot, Citroën, Mercedes, whatever the make is of chassis that's hybrid being able to be built on as a motorhome. Now, if we don't, then there will be no supply of chassis to be made into motorhomes. I think that's a real issue. So like, you'll just have to rely on the second-hand market? Well, yeah. You could potentially buy a motorhome that's diesel next year, 23, and have it for seven years, and you could possibly get your money back. If there's no supply of new at all, because there is no diesel, there is no hybrid that's viable, then you know that's going to just push the used market up even more, isn't it? So another question that has to be answered about this 2030 date. Indeed, yeah. I, we, I watch with great interest. And I've no doubt that manufacturers will be on this, you know, but the van market, the, you know, the, the parcel delivery market is way bigger than the motorhome market. And that's where their focus is going to be. You know, it's going to be on payload for deliveries, range for deliveries. It's not going to be on people using them and recharging them in remote locations. Yeah, for leisure purposes. Yeah, exactly. So the van delivery people, you know, they have a circuit, they start at their base, they do their round drop in their parcels, they go back to the base where they can recharge on a proper charger. I was talking to the AA, uh, someone very senior who manages the entire fleet of vehicles for the AA, and they are right now still in a quandary about what vehicles they want to run on their fleet as recovery vehicles. You know, what's their van van going to be powered by? Is it going to be battery? Is it going to be hydrogen? Uh, and interestingly, they've only they've just created a van which is a recharge station for electric and hydrogen. It's live now. It's there's one of them, and it's a recharge vehicle ready to go and recharge a vehicle that's flat. Uh, and they are still in a quandary about how are they going to run their fleet. You think about a relay truck. It picks you up in Bournemouth where you break down and you want to get back to Inverness. You know, that vehicle is going to go so far, it doesn't do like a DPD van. It ends up from A to B and B could be anywhere. How does it get back? How does it recharge? And not only that, uh, specifically with the AA, RIC and other rescue organisations at the moment, you know, they have a spare tyre or take you somewhere very uh, quickly for a spare or they fit it for you or uh, they might have a, spe a battery on board which they can replace or they have a little bit of fuel. The thing is with electric cars and any electric vehicles is their service is going to have to change yeah. because if somebody is getting, you know, getting halfway to their destination and suddenly they're out of charge. They're going to call the AA and expect a charge from the AA. Yeah, so right. all these things are, are coming to the fore, aren't they? And yeah. there's no one. There was a, an unfortunate traffic collision outside our business here. Uh, we had an open day. And just as we opened, two cars or three cars hit each other and closed the road. Great timing. No one was hurt, thankfully. But one of them was a very new. This guy had waited nine months for his car. It was a two-week-old BMW, and a big van went up the back of it. And the fire brigade, I, we'd never seen anything like it. it. There was no real damage to the car. The back end was dented. But because it was all electric, the protocol the fire brigade had to go through, chocking the wheels, closing the road, covering the road in, I don't know what they were spraying with, some kind of foam. They said, what, what are you worried about? And I think they were actually genuinely worried, and this is their just their protocols they're following, that if anything went wrong with that battery, there could be an explosion or you know some big catastrophe. And it just you know delayed everything whilst they followed their protocols to treat that scene. It was fascinating. Never seen anything like it. So lots of questions to be uh, answered there on electric vehicles. Uh, that was rather a long answer, but it's always going to be when we talk about electric motorhomes. It is. But uh, stand by, keep listening to the podcast, watching the podcast. Lots more to come on this. And we'll ask, hopefully ask, answer your questions uh, as they arise. But uh, keep, as I say, keep watching and listening. Uh, it's definitely a theme that we'll see yeah. thread through yeah. next year and beyond. It's going uh, to be the dominant theme for the next I think, few years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the next, definitely for the next five, six years. And I... I'm confident we'll get some answers yeah. because we keep coming across all these questions and I'm not afraid to ask them. Uh, so if you've got questions, very specific ones about this, we'd love to hear them because I'll add them to the list and it's a long list. But believe me, I'm talking to people way above my pay grade, you know, people who've got very, very big crystal balls in research and development into electric vehicles and the, it, all across Europe. 
uh, and uh, we're constantly reaching out to them and asking them these questions. So, you know, join the campaign, let's get some answers and try and figure out what on earth is going to be the future for motorhomes because at this moment in time, I'm not sure. So if somebody says, I've got a burning question, how do they ask you? Dead easy. Just go to motorhomemat.co.uk forward slash ask Matt. You can type it in and send it or please, we'd love it if you'd hit the little orange button and record it and then we can get your voice on the podcast, which we love to do. Absolutely. So we've been talking about sleeping. We've been talk- answering, answering your questions as well. Hopefully uh, you've enjoyed the podcast. Uh, join us again next week on video uh, and in audio. And how do people uh, stay in touch and find more uh, about you uh, and that leisureshop.com? You can join us on the website, motohomemat.co.uk, where you'll find all the links to our socials. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, and we're on YouTube as well as Motohome Matt. So do check us out there.